Paul, you're a mainstay in the Fulham Legends teams every summer. Um, presumably, you still like pulling on that white shirt when you get the chance? Absolutely. Yeah, it's wonderful. Just to be asked to get a game is quite nice, but uh, it's always nice to come back and, and see all the old boys from, from the day, um, see who's gone bald, who's got fat, and who's still fit. But uh, no, it's, uh, it's, it's always nice to play in the charity matches, but uh, nice to come back to Craven Cottage and, and play for Fulham. This year it's at Bramall Lane, obviously against a Sheffield United All-Stars team who you've also got links to. So you're going to be playing 45 minutes for each side, aren't you? I'm going to try to. I'm going to try to. I don't know. The full 90 minutes might be a bit difficult, but uh, I'll start training. I'll be, I'll be fine. No, it's great because, you know, obviously both clubs are very close to my heart. I had uh, successful stints at both clubs. Um, always had a very good rapport with both sets of supporters, which is nice as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this game. It's going to be extra special. When you joined, you were our first ever million pound player. Did that bring any sort of pressure with it at all? Um, not really, not really, because it was, you know, I think League One it was at the time. So it was, it was still, I don't think it was publicised as much. Um, in fact, I think it's a quiz question now, the first million pound player in, in League One. So uh, I take that with pride. But uh, no, no, I, I just saw it as another challenge. I was excited. I knew I'd seen the plan um, that Kevin Keegan and Ray Wilkins at the time had, had put forward. And I knew it would be a matter of time before, you know, even bigger names would be coming in, the likes of Chris Coleman's and and uh, and Barry Hales and what and what have you. So, uh, you know, it was um, no, it, it was good. It was great. With those plans in place and big names like Keegan and Wilkins looking after everything, it must have just been such an exciting place to be. It was, yeah. You know, again, Fulham is such a trendy place to be in as well. So it's not hard to attract uh, players um, as well as the finances were nice. But um, but no, it's a nice place to be. Um, Again, with the fact that you got Kevin Keegan and Ray Wilkins in charge, you know, it didn't take long for them to uh, um, convince me that the, the the club was going places, and you knew it was. Whenever we speak to anyone who played in one of the teams that was part of our ascent to the Premier League, the recurring theme always seems to be how good a group of lads it was. Was that the case with you? Hundred percent, hundred percent. When we used to socialise, it was uh, it was actually hard to get in places because usually with teams I've been at in the past, you know, you get six or seven core players always going out. But uh, with this group, it was like a table for twenty eight. You know, we'd have every player. Nobody wanted to miss out. Um, we socialised together. We, you know, we we did everything together, and it was a, a very very close knit group, and uh, we used to have fun. I think when a lot of Fulham fans think back about your time here, the one goal that stands out above the rest of them is the cup goal at Anfield. Where does that rank for you in your career? Aesthetically, by far the, the best goal I've ever scored, you know, to, uh, to score at Anfield. Um, left foot from the distance I did. It was, uh, it was a pretty special goal and, uh, like I said, aesthetically one of the best I've scored. So, uh, yeah, no, it was, uh, it was quite the moment. It's a shame it didn't go on to, to become the winner or anything, but... Uh, it's one I'll never forget. I remember it being televised and also Simon Morgan scoring a fairly comical own goal as well. It was a great finish. You thought it was comical. I thought his, uh, his, I thought his wasn't far off being as good as mine. It was a bit of a half volley, wasn't it? Um, yeah, he, uh, he was a good lad, Morgs, and it was a shame that uh, on the day it, it happens in football. But, uh, you know, he, he was a wonderful servant of, of Fulham Football Club and uh, a great lad as well. Do you get to see much of Fulham these days? I haven't done, no. Being based in the Midlands, I'm kind of back and forth. And when I do come to London, I kind of feel as though I have to go to West Ham, obviously because of Karen being there. But uh, I haven't been back uh, to watch a game. I have uh, I keep speaking to, to Felix White from the Maccabees saying we're going to go together, but uh, just haven't got around it. But next year, for sure, I will. You're back at Motspur Park today. I mean, we haven't been outside much because it's not the best weather, but has it changed much since you were here as a player? Well, the cottage, the actual building hasn't, but I think it's listed, so that's probably the reason for it. So it still brings back memories walking through there, but I'm sure if you look at the training facilities and what have you, it will be. Um, I haven't had a chance to see it, but I'll let you know afterwards. But I'm, I'm presuming it's all high-tech and uh, moving forward in the right direction because it was already starting to be uh, when I was here back. God, I can't even remember when. So I can imagine what it's like now and look forward to having a look. I'm guessing we didn't have a TV studio back then. No, absolutely not. That's for sure. Yeah, that's one thing that was lacking. Cool. Thanks for your time, Paul. Pleasure.